Mm-hmm. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Englewood Cliffs special meeting of Mayor and Council. Today is March 20th, 2018. It's 6.43 p.m. Mm-hmm. Uh, can the roll call, please? Mayor Cranjack? Here. Council Pers- uh, Councilperson Zaversa? E. Park? Hello. Ellen? You're on speaker. Uh, I'm, I'm taking the roll call. So, okay. you're present? Yes. O? Here. McMorrow? Here. N. Park? <coughs> Wu? Here. Burr Attorney? Present. Burr Administrator? And we also have an attendance. Could you please just repeat your names for the record? Sure, Steve Rogat, Bond Council. Thank you. Steve Rogat, Bond Council, and? Michael Okrepke, Mazer Consultant. Michael Okrepke from Mazer, our borough engineer. Okay, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, everybody, please rise for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, would you please read the open public meetings act statement? Adequate notice of this meeting was given to the press and posted as required. Date and time of this meeting was legally given as required by the Open Public Meetings Act. This notice is on file with the municipal clerk and posted on the bulletin board. Minutes of this meeting will be made available to the public upon the completion of typing and proofreading by the municipal clerk. Thank you. Uh, Before I open up to the public, I just wanted to mention that at the last meeting we discussed the promotion policy for chief and um, we're not doing anything on that tonight, but I just want to let you know that I've asked the, um, the Borough Council to revise the ordinance and figure out how we could make one of the requirements uh, expanded and disjunctive so it will be four years college, BS or BA degree, uh, or four years of military service with an honorable discharge. Uh, so she'll be working on that before the next regular meeting. Can I have a motion to open to the public, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. If there's anyone from the public who wishes to be heard, uh, please raise your hand. I'll recognize you. Come up to the microphone. Please state your name and address. And this is for anything that you want to talk about, not just what's... Um, not the bond ordinance. Not the bond ordinance, but anything other than the bond ordinance. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, the bond ordinance will have its own separate that's public right. hearing. That's all yeah. that's right. yeah. okay. okay, so anything other than the bond ordinance right now, you'll have an opportunity later to speak to the bond ordinance specifically. Yes. Resolution 1874 to be pleased to be the hourly rate and not to exceed about. Lands that lands that. I'd like to know. Can we state your name and address, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Karen Geiger, 270 Alpha. Thank you. Okay. Um, what I'd like to know is what the current rate is and what you're proposing to increase it to and why. Okay, do you mind? Uh, sure. Amory, our borough council, will answer that. I believe the current rate is 150. Mr. Lands that has for an increase in hourly rate to 195, and uh, we negotiated it to 175 per hour with a not to exceed amount for the remainder. I think the remainder of the year or the remainder of the litigation, the remainder of the litigation, and not to exceed amount of 15,000. So the total to be extended in this litigation by Lanza and Lanza from the beginning of their involvement to the end of the litigation is 15000 No. That isn't good. I didn't think so. We're, we're increasing. Whatever, I don't know what the not to exceed amount was before, but we are funding for the remainder of the year and for the remainder of the litigation, 15000 I'm confused. The amount that Lanza and Lanza will be committed to spend is one. 
the maximum. Currently, we're putting a resolution in for 15000 for the remainder of the, of the litigation. So they will not be permitted to extend more than 15000 from From January 1 to the remainder of the litigation, okay. unless this council votes in. Okay, but you do not know how much they've spent before January. Um, not all. That's That's 15, in, addition. in addition. Thank yeah. you for clarifying that. And yeah. why are we, or why are you entertaining an increase since they responded to an RFQ at 150? No, they might They didn't respond to an RFQ. Industry. He's in a uh, carryover because of the litigation. He had requested an increase. Because he was a carryover? Yes. Okay. And I also want to know if uh, Ms. Rizzuto was in receipt of uh, the email sent by Walter Lewis to you today. Uh, yes, I received a, uh, I think he sent me an email yesterday, last night. No, I think he sent you another one today. Another one. And I suggest that you share it with the council. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Just for everyone's edification, Mr. Lauer is Ms. Geiger's attorney in a lawsuit that she has against the borough, and um, we're not going to deal with litigations for members of the audience while we're here tonight doing serious business. Anybody else want to speak? Want to speak? Yes. Lauren Eastwood, Fort Willow Drive. Um, I always find it curious that people are terribly concerned about the cost of cleaning up messes, uh, but none of these people were concerned about the fact that um, there was a monumental conflict between the former mayor and the former borough engineer. Quite well taken. That's why we have litigation right now. Anybody else? Okay. Seeing and hearing no one. I'm going to vote to close the public portion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, next on our agenda is Ordinance 2018 18 01. Madam Clerk, the record. Bond ordinance to authorize the engineering phase of the Fifth Street Extension Improvements Project in, by, and for the Borough of Ingle Eclipse in the County of Bergen. State of New Jersey, a local improvement to appropriate the sum of 140000 to pay the cost thereof to make a down payment to authorize the issuance of bonds to finance such appropriation and to provide for the issuance of bond anticipation notes in the anticipation of the issuance of such bonds. Thank you. Do you have a reason for it, I don't think I have to get one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you for joining us, gentlemen, this evening. Um, we're going to open to the public before I continue to thank you. Mm -hmm. I know you have a presentation. I think it would be more meaningful if they did a presentation first. So, again, thank, we're going to open to the public and let them have their presentation. It might actually uh, answer some of your questions, okay? So, thank you again for joining us. Um, we have our borough engineer, our borough bond council here. Um, the floor is yours. You know what, Mike? Maybe use that microphone. No, this one on the table. No, Just one on the table. See if it's turned on. If not, I'll turn it on for you. I think it'll be helpful so that everyone could hear. You're welcome. No, you're fine. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Can everyone hear me? My name is Michael Okreki. I'm from Major Consulting, and I'm here to go over the bond ordinance, or at least the engineering portion that was uh, just described to you. So, what we're looking at here is we have an unimproved section of Fifth Street, which is approximately here in this border over to the terminus of Fifth Street. And this area is currently unimproved, or at least the majority of it is unimproved. Uh, it has uh, in, in a right of way area, which, which is here. There's everything from uh, some garages, some very short buildings, the trees, 
as well as in this area approximately, uh, there is some stone uh, base for, for a road. Recently, there were some uh, approvals on this on Fifth Street that allowed the planning board to negotiate a pass-through for an easement using this lot, a portion of lot eight, for a utility easement from Fifth Street to Sixth Street. And as a part of that application, <coughs> with that developer, uh, spurred the discussion uh, with improving this Fifth Street for the entire area. The mayor and council uh, requested that our firm put together a proposal to complete all the engineering required to upgrade this area and put together a cost estimate by obtaining bids uh, <coughs> from contractors. So the first step in, in breaking this out why we're here tonight <coughs> is to break out the responsibility of the owners of what what the cost would be to each owner that fronts up this street. And how that is dictated by state law is <coughs> an area <coughs> of the individual property as it goes to the center line of the road. And then in order to calculate that, that percentage of uh, participation, the entire area is calculated so there becomes a weighted percentage. So this, so this lot has a percentage um, because it's larger, whereas uh, this this smaller lot would have a smaller percentage of responsibility because the frontage is less. And it always goes to the center line of the road for both sides of this street. This is all, all of these uh, documents uh, are blown up from an eight and a half by eleven presentation that was previously submitted to the borough. It, this is just a concept of, of what would be done. We're talking about adding in uh, asphalt, curbing, pavement, uh, drainage utilities. This is the this is how the, the drainage utilities is conceptually would be handled, uh, taking it down to Sixth Street and going down to Bayview. There, because this property or, or, or this development is is brand new, uh, there's a lot more that goes into this type of project than a traditional project that uh, the borough residents should be familiar with. Because of this, <coughs> for, let me give you an example of one. Uh, a common project that, that many people may see around town is a mill and pave project, where a certain street will be uh, uh, targeted for uh, upgrade, and the street will be milled and paved. And that is a very uh, efficient way to upgrade a, a street and to, and to increase the longevity of it. It also doesn't require a lot of engineering because it is taking something that exists and just, just replacing it in common. What is required here is because everything is going to be new, is a significant, a significant amount of analysis has to be completed. Survey the right of way, survey the, the topography, under uh, geotechnical investigation to investigate the depth of the bedrock, because as we know in Angle Cliffs, there's a tremendous amount of bedrock in the area, along with analyzing the existing drainage utilities, sewer utilities, uh, electric utility locations, uh, and how they would interact with this new uh, extension of, of Fifth Street and, and ultimately turning down to Bayview. And um, I'm just, let me just complete this. As I mentioned, be, um, in order to obtain some of the permits, there would have to be design of the storm and sewer and water, which would require permitting with various local agencies and state agencies as well. And with that, I'll 
that is how we developed our proposal to the Borough of Vanilla Cliffs. There were some administrative costs that were that were added on, and that's ultimately how the, the, the bond amount was uh, was established. And the ultimate product of all this work is to have a very accurate representation of what the cost for construction will be. Though we don't want to be in a position, or, or rather we are advised, to move forward this way. We don't want to be in a position moving forward where we don't know the cost of construction. With very accurate survey and very accurate design, when, when this is put out the bid, the bid numbers will be very accurate as to what is going to be constructed in terms of cost, as well as actually what is going to be constructed. And with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to the attorney and, and the audience for any questions. What we're planning on doing is really a two-phase uh, authorization of the project. This is the first phase where we're going to appropriate money to allow the engineer to do the design of this to come up with, you know, actually what we're going to do and to, uh, to come up with reasonable, a reasonable cost estimate. Once we have the reasonable cost estimate, uh, the engineer will be presenting a, a report to the governing body. And at that point, uh, we'll have a good idea of what the project's going to cost. We'll also have somewhat of you know, a, a decent idea of what the assessments will be uh, to each of the property owners. What we didn't want to do was, because potentially there's a wide range of the cost of this project, we didn't want to put numbers out without having a pretty good idea of what they're going to cost and what ultimately will be assessed or could be assessed to the property owners. So that was the basis for doing this in two steps. First, we're going to do the extensive design work, and then we'll come back with the second ordinance, which will have a proposed construction cost, and we'll have, an, we'll have another meeting like we did previously with the property owners to go over what, what the project is going to be and what the costs are, and get some idea of what the uh, potential assessments will be. The assessments won't be made until after the project is completed, and uh, the costs are submitted to the assessor, and the assessor will uh, uh, propose assessment amounts to the property owners, and that will go to the governing body for their review and ultimate imposition of the health assessment. So it's kind of a lengthy process. We're trying to do it once at a time and figure out uh, the best information possible on the project that we're looking to propose. Okay, so at, at this point, I'd like to open, and thank you for your presentations, gentlemen. I appreciate that. Uh, I'd like to open to the public for comments. I need a motion to open. Second. In favor? Aye. Alan? Alan, are you on? Hello? Hello? Hi. We just asked to open to the public. Yes, hi. Okay, thank you. <coughs> All right. Does anyone from the public who wishes to speak <coughs> as to Ordinance 18-01, please raise your hand, come to the microphone, state your name and address. Yes. <coughs> Mike Hodgson over at 11th District. Sorry about the weather. Um, when we were at that private meeting, I was told that they actually had the breakouts on assessment for property owners. If they actually gave me a specific number. So I'm just curious, has that changed? No, I, I have that tonight, and I have the, the breakouts uh, that were discussed that night. So it is part of this approval process to approve those no, amounts? No, no really, the, uh, anything that was handed out previously was just preliminary. Okay, because we haven't determined what the costs are, this is just for the moment. Oh, okay, I'm so talking about 40,000 months. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Say that again. Okay, so that's that was for the breakout of 140. But that's cool in that as well. Because all the potential assessments are going to be based upon the determination of the issues and value in these particular properties. Okay. So what if there is no increase in value of the property? That, 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 I'm glad you brought it up. If there's no increase in value of the property, right, per appraiser, I assume, right, we would use a property appraiser, like oh, I did when I applied for a mortgage. No, I mean the assessor is going to make the determination. 
thought it was excessive. He will be he will be presented with a report on the cost of the project, and then he will make a report on what the benefits are to each of the particular properties. Okay, yeah, that's what I was on there on last night right. because we heard originally numbers of like it might be seven or eight hundred thousand dollars, which I still can't get my head around having lived there now for five years. And then people at the meeting that we had said, no, it's going to be like 1.5 million, which sounds even crazier. But the improvements to any property there combined won't come up to 1.5 million dollars. So that's what I'm trying to figure out. And if you, this even makes sense. Right. You're you're focusing on the end result, which is what's most important to you. Okay. We're not at that point yet. Okay. But you you're talking about you assessing the portion of 140 thousand on a let's see what that leads to. No, no. We're not going to assess you the 140. The, the plan would be to assess both the cost of the design as well as the improvements altogether at the same time. So if they decide, the board, not to go forward with the improvements, then what happens on the 140 grand? Uh, then it would be an assessment and it becomes, okay. it becomes a borrower. That, that's, okay, that's what I wanted to hear. So if, if we just to be clear on the record now, if, if we you guys vote to do this survey and then it doesn't pass to actually do the improvements that you come up with, the property owners are now stuck with a bill for an assessment with and not getting any improvements. Correct. Okay. Uh, that's one. Two, have we looked into, because I know this has been five years now, is there no option other than a million dollar project? Because I'm one of three homeowners that, that I know, and I know there's commercial property owners, that didn't say we need curbs and sewers and all this and all that. We just, we have an, an undrivable road, an undrivable piece of dirty rock. Um, and I've heard enough times, it's not, it was the planning board, prior administration, I get all that stuff, but the reality is, at anyone's expense, is there an option between not doing anything and spending $1.5 million? I mean, is there really no way to repair the road, or is that going to be in your analysis? For 140, would the options of, you know, we don't need curbs, we don't need to extend it to six, we could literally, you know, straighten it and pave it. The, the short answer to your, let me just answer your question. Yeah. The only thing that I'm aware of that, that can be done is other than what I laid out tonight yeah. is to say, is to say, okay, there's some existing uh, stone there, some base that can be repaired by DPW. Okay. If anything is done beyond that, and, and I'll refer to the attorneys, it's my understanding that the because it doesn't meet the standards of you know roads and so forth, it would be a liability for the town. And so the town, so you break it, you pull it type of thing. So okay. you would have to maintain what is there without any expansion or, or any improvement beyond the level of stone and so forth. So you're saying like those holes can be fixed by the town. <laughs> and then probably, should, that's my problem because I've been a taxpayer for five years and to be told that there's none of those tax dollars going toward anything on my street is very disconcerting. I mean, it doesn't make any sense because I pay the same level of tax as everyone else. Um, so even if we didn't have this pavement project, now that you're telling me that the town could have repaired those holes at least without exposing themselves, I that's believe kind so. of bothersome. I, I believe so, and again, I would defer to, to the attorneys regarding, regarding that, but I definitely know that there can be no further improvement beyond that, and that may not even be allowed. Okay, and then so last uh, question. Mike, I have to say, it's yeah, the first time that Mike, yeah. the first time I'm hearing that, because according to your boss, there's nothing that could have been done there. So, you know, I think you should be. It, again, it, Andy it, here it, is it, the it, one that's with yeah. Again, and that's why I defer to, defer to the attorneys uh, regarding well, that. Andy's not an attorney, he's an engineer. <laughs> right, I know, and, and if, if nothing can be done, then we don't, again, it's what I described, you break it, you boy, type of thing, if the town cannot be done, no liability. Okay, and then last option, so if the town doesn't have liability now for the street, um, does that mean that the people who own the property on the street have the ability, if it made more sense financially, which is crazy, let's say we could fix the street for less money, do we have the ability to do that? 
I mean, who owns the road? That's why I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? If, if it's, we can't touch it because we'll have liability, well, in essence, that means that if I repair it myself, you don't have liability because you didn't touch it. So what, is there anything preventing us from doing that? Well, you would need mayor and council approval to do that. Well, I'm saying, and, and is there any reason that they wouldn't approve something? Pro probably 15 reasons. Just give me a call. That's what I'm asking. It, it is a borough road, right? It's not like a borough kind of town road or anything like that. It is a borough road. Okay. So mm -hmm. the proper way to do things is to go ahead with the, with the initial bond ordinance, assess the real engineering needs there, and then do the improvements properly. To do temporary improvements raises a host of issues, even if you were to be authorized to do something on, pro on borough property, uh, raises issues of that liability just as if we would do it. And it would include you in right. that responsibility. And I understand. That's what I'm trying to figure out. It would include you in that responsibility. And also, the borough has an obligation with respect to public property, to follow all the public bidding laws and, and the requirements of public bidding. And we also have the responsibility, which is why we're attempting to address this, uh, to, um, uh, ha there are standards for road improvements. Okay. And they're set by the state and the federal government. There are state and federal standards on how the road beds are made and, and what constitutes an appropriate road and the geotechnical is a major issue. So we certainly wouldn't allow uh, an individual to do that without doing all of that vetting. Yeah, because so by the way, I was suggesting going that in yeah. I was talking about putting asphalt. Yeah, we're the truth is, we're it's in there, progress right now. Right? So I understand yeah. people have said you can't just put pavement over it yeah. because where's the water going to go? It's rock right now. So the water's going to go right where it goes right now. Which is right down, you know, into our front street. So that part never made sense. The last couple, the bidding process, that's open. Any person or any company qualified, able, qualified. Any qualified company. So I mean, they can. We can have some optimism that someone will try and undercut this and have a lower bid level well, than one point five million dollar that was run out last time. That's the motivation of public bid. Okay, that's what I figured. Right. Um, and then lastly, I'd like to ask the council based on the tax dollars spent by residents there, why is nothing being put forward at whatever improvements that we do? Why are, why are no, none no, of our taxes being put forward? I don't know what you're talking about. We're talking about, we're talking about this first, final No, project. I know what you're talking oh. about. It's the first time hearing that statement that oh, Mr. Krepke said. Oh, that 100% assessed to the property owners, right? Like, I'm, I'm no, asking I'm not, what, I don't what He's price? asking a specific question. Let's say, whatever the cost of construction is. Yeah. He's concerned that all the costs will be borne by the, the property owners solely, and there'll be no participation by the borough in general. Despite tax dollars being funneled in from the owners of the properties for years and years and years. Well, I, I believe that your, your home is assessed based on a home that's on an unpaved road, so it's not being assessed as if though you were on a paved road. And when, when you bought the new house on an unpaved road, you knew what you were buying then, and you have it today. And we're, we're here to try to fix the problem. Uh, I can't say much more than that about it because I'm not a big fan of what happened here uh, with your developer and how I inherited this problem from the prior administration, who was very close to your developer. Okay, I'll leave it at that. For the record, most procedures, the road goes in first, and the house is going. So yeah, it's unheard of that there are houses and no road. So I guess that's my last question, because my house is assessed at, at the value of other homes on paved roads. That's where I bring in the full circle of, is this, I mean, did I see, how can I be assessed that's on an unpaved question. road? I mean, it's a valid question, but that's right. really a question for you to have with board? Mr. Rego. No, uh, with, with Mr. Rego, and you're more than Who's that? the town. Okay. Okay. Who's our and then that, those are good questions you're bringing up, and, and you are more than welcome to go and talk to him. Okay. And, and yeah, And there's something sure. that could be done. There you're saying. Uh, oh, absolutely. You should okay. talk to him. You should absolutely talk okay. to him and do your due diligence. I mean, any property owner has the right to file a tax deal if you think you, that you're overtaxed. But the first step would be to go, to go and talk to him. Okay. Um, I think the answer is Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thursday night. Thursday night. Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, the, the, uh, the tax assessor is in on Mr. Kochnover, the tax assessor is in his office on Thursday evening. 5.30, right, 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 yeah. 5.30 to 7.30. 5.30 to 7.30. So I, you know, feel free to go over and talk to him. Yes. Mayor, for the record, I just want to say Councilman Park arrived at 7.10 p.m. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, my name is Maya I live on 25th Street and with this. And um, I actually have two questions and one is to speak about my... I, I apologize. Can I have your name again for the record? Nayam here. Nayam? Yes. And your address? 25th Street and with this. Thank you. So I'm actually representing the Gold Valley asset who actually kind of triggered this whole discussion because we own lot 8, 9, 10, 11, and um, lot 8 is the one that where the sewer is going to go through. So I actually have a very specific question about the easement that you mentioned. So is it something that the, the bill has already set or is it something that's going to be... Well, I'm not asking the question right I'm just wondering if there's an easement already determined there. Or is so, or sorry, go ahead. So, or was that easement set as part of the application to develop lot 10 and 11? The easement, as a part of the approval process, right. that was granted by the, the planning board, the easement was granted by the owner to right. the planner. Right. And that easement uh, is filed, I don't have the paperwork in front of me, but the easement was filed. So it does exist. Right, but what if, will, will that still be valid if you're not going to develop Lot 10 and 11? Because that, that, was, that was granted by us under the condition that we're going to be developing Lot 10 and 11. But if we decide not to develop that, <coughs> can, we, can that easily be revoked somehow? Or? Not, I don't believe so. You'd have to check the, the individual covenants of that, okay. of, of that easement. Okay, because um, it is possible that the easement can be revoked at some point just because we're not developing ten Lot 10. 10 and 11, then I guess this whole project may be, but I'll look into the actual. Look into the yes. so. Okay. Um, okay. And actually, I have a question about the 140K dollars of assessment fee. So I believe as part of our application to develop Lot 10 and 11, there was a very uh, comprehensive survey done on the um, viability of um, putting the sewer down the eight down the lot, down. So, there, so there was some comprehensive study done to review whether it's possible to put the sewer on the A Street and, um, on the lot A and also to construct the roads on, on the 5th Street. But are you going to be leveraging any of those studies that's been done before? Because that was a very comprehensive study to leave. And I think if you leverage that to a certain extent, then I think the cost to assess the viability may go down a little bit. I don't know. But I'm just wondering about it, it, it was a small portion of what is going to be constructed. I mean, right. it, you have to bear in mind when that application came before the planning board, it, it was not for the complete development of the entire road, drainage, utilities, that is, that is proposed in this development. What was proposed there was a, a stop gap until something like this is proposed. That the only utilities that were proposed at the time going completely to uh, 6th Street were the sewer facilities, and that, and that was it. Okay. The balance, drainage, electric, telephone, electric cable, things like that were not really considered in that application. Oh, okay. From my memory, I thought drainage was one of the big ticket items back then when we were discussing the development in um, last time and but. I guess. It, it was. It, it definitely was. And it was, it was so you can see the portion of the street, how, how much the draining cost is. We're, we're continuing the development all the way down the street and dealing with the entire drainage. The drainage that was discussed in your application as well as, as others along that street. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm Joe Severi. I live at 17 Kings Court, Fort Lee, Councilman of Borough, Fort Lee. 
and uh, Welcome. part of the Fort Lee's uh, continuing a, a, a good neighbor policy. Uh, we have a number of, uh, of uh, agreements with our, our, our adjacent towns that let uh, those towns hook into our sewers. Um, I see a very large run that goes from 5th to 6th Street, which could be cut substantially by just uh, extending the sewer to the south and hooking into the sewer and others in Fort Lee. We have, uh, we have shared services agreements. Mm -hmm. uh, we're uh, very happy uh, hosts to the uh, people of uh, Edward Cliffs for our Fort Lee Library. Uh, our second year of that, uh, that's something that was done uh, at uh, the request of uh, your, your, your fine mayor, and uh, we're uh, very happy with the way that's turning out. Uh, for these uh, libraries, very happy to have uh, had their uh, second full class of their ESL program, which has been funded uh, with some of the funds that came from Angler Cliffs, and thank you for that. Um, I have a question. Uh, besides the shared services agreement and the hook into the, uh, into the sewer and the easement, because I know that the our utilities that do run up the street. Um, the question I have is whether or not uh, the properties on the west side of the street, which are commercial properties, would actually have curb cuts. Um, because you have a green belt uh, along there that I think runs 15 or, 15 or 20 feet, I believe that would uh, pretty much prevent anybody from traversing that. So has that been taken into consideration? The, the plan from our initial walk, the initial investigation would be to install curb cuts only where existing access is. So if if someone wanted to develop in the future, they would have to apply for a road opening permit just like any other road in, in the town. But then they would be assessed. Are uh, you doing a special assessment, an additional assessment to properties, or are you just doing it on additional value? Because the way you described it, Seeing that if the property was assessed currently at eight hundred thousand dollars, and with the new improved road it goes to nine hundred thousand, the only thing you're going to be paying is your two dollars or dollar seventy-five, whatever your tax rate is, mm -hmm. on a hundred thousand uh, dollars. Or is it a special assessment that gets paid out over the period of time that that, that recaptures your bond cost? The last, the latter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The latter. So it's a special assessment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So it's not on the increased value. It's on a special assessment no. based on. It's based the, on the frontage. Based on, yeah, well, on, on the frontage. On the frontage share of, their, of the cost of the improvement. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, it's your pro rata share. Right. Of, of the cost. Okay. Okay. Um, for the most part, the uh, commercial properties on the west side don't have access to Fifth Street. So. Um, I think that would have to come into the balance when it comes to giving the assessment there pro rata share. But again, you'll be dealing with your tax assessor on that, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Do you have a call? I sure did. Thank you. So I'll come on there and you're welcome to call. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I'm on the council for my 21st year, and we go to Cliffside Park, Palisades Park, and we're very happy and great neighbors of the Penguin Cliffs. Thank you. Thank you thank very you, much, sir. Mr. Cervelli, for coming here today. And uh, we thank you for uh, for working with us. We might, we might, yes. I appreciate you raising that. Uh, we also appreciate your help uh, in getting the library deal done. You work directly with me on that. I really appreciate that. And um, relay that thanks to your mayor and council. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, behind you. Thank you, Mayor, members of the Council. Um, Joe Shockey, 30 Silver Avenue. Uh, my family, uh, we, we have uh, uh, some property on the west side of this street, along the west side, a lot of this commercial. Um, just based on how this is going to be assessed, this project, uh, we potentially would be on the hook for approximately 20% of the total cost of everything. Um, certainly, we would not be in favor of that nor support it if we can't use the street. Um, I doubt anyone else in this room would, would agree to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for something they're not allowed to use. I just can't <coughs> imagine anyone. Unless anybody would, you know, please let me know. Um, so we, um, you know, certainly would want to have use of the road for, for those properties. Um, we're in the process right now of actually working on a plan to uh, kind of rip everything down and put something else up. We're, we're kind of in the planning phase on that now. So we're hopefully going to have something ready to present soon on that front. But um, you know, that would be our major concern that you know, we would also have use of the street with our, with our property. 
then we're going to be on the hook for, again, 20% of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, we'll, we'll take note of that. And um, I guess, um, I don't know, is it the planning board that is it with that? Certainly, it sounds like something the planning board will be, uh, will be gone before the planning zone board. Well, that would be for what we look to do with the property, but right. separately for this, um, you know, again, if our property is going to be assessed 20% of this whole street project, you know, to not have the ability to use it would be a little outrageous for, for anybody well, to swallow it. Well, you will be able to use the street, but what you're really saying is that you want curb cuts where no well, sir, exists. You know, anybody is that correct? Them, use them. You yes, we would want curb cuts. You want curb cuts Access where, to none, the street. where yes. none currently exist. Well, it's, it's a paper street, so I understand. there are no curbs. Okay, I understand. But it, you would like curb cuts where none currently exist. So right. I can't tell you right now that it would be the mayor and council under this project that would approve such a thing. But when you say it's curb generally curb planning board that does that. But when you say curb cuts don't exist, that's also true for the residential properties as well. Uh -huh. Nothing has curb cuts because there are no curbs. Okay. So, so then you're saying the same standard would apply to the residential properties? that also don't have purpose? I, I don't think we're prepared to really answer your question at this time. Well, you had an opinion about the commercial property not having purpose. No. You, you brought to my attention that there are no purpose. There are no purpose. But I understand, but there are existing driveways that people use not for all houses. the properties. Well, he, no, he, no, we're not, not for all those let properties. me just add this. We're, we're not going to resolve your issue tonight, but it, it's certainly being noted by our professionals, okay. and uh, we'll, we'll, you know, we will deal with that, and um, we may have to have a dialogue with you as well on that. Okay, and as an alternative, and this is just a question, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Cocknover mentioned about, you know, could you do something else with the street? And I'm not an expert, but is it possible then the town, because the town owns the street, could vacate the street and then just leave it up to the residential properties on 5th to decide, pave it or develop it however they want, because the town will no longer have ownership? I don't think we could vacate a street in that manner. Okay. Again, I'm not an authority. It was just a question. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And also want to thank you and your brother for your service on the uh, Edgewood Cliffs Fire okay. Department. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. Yeah, just, this was quick. Can you just tell me the, uh, my cost per location? Yeah, we got it. The uh, assessment again. So just say it's, say it's $100,000. Is any one person's portion? How does it work paying back the 10 year assessment? Like, let's say you're assessed $100,000. Can you just okay. tell me how that actually works? Well, it'll give you a 10 year period to make payments. Is it a, is it a, does it go on to my tax bill? Is it a separate check I write monthly to the town? Like, do you actually know how it, how it works? It, 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 it's a separate, I think it's a separate assessment bill, but it's just the same as your, your taxes. Quarterly kind of, kind of bill? That does much of a job. So it'd be whatever the amount is divided by 10, paid quarterly. <coughs> whatever my assessed amount is divided by 10, 10 years, paid quarterly? Yeah, plus interest. Plus interest on it? Plus an interest factor. And what's in, what can the interest factor be? Is it the bond interest? Yeah, it'll be tied in with the. I mean, like low single digit, whatever yeah, the, yeah, the bond yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, thanks. You're welcome. Anybody else? Yes, sir. There is a good question. Did you, did you say 10 year bond? Go out and money so cheap now, interest rates are so cheap now, why do you go out 20 or 30 years? Because it's tied in with the life of the, of the street, so we only have a 10 year life by statute for this improvement. Is that all you're paying it? Yeah. On special assessment on the street? But silver is yeah. Silver is long. Yeah, but, 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 but you take the, the lowest common denominator, we're, we're not going to break out the cost for each item and assess them differently. That would be new. Not really, no. I mean, it's all one project, and, and the life of the project is, is 10 years by statute. The life of the street is 10 years? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the type of street that we're building, yes, yes, by statute. Anybody else? Yes. Heidi Skolman, 18 Sylvan. So I just want to, um, for the record, to also say that as a property owner on 9W, without access. I mean, I, I'm not even sure what the public hearing is about since it doesn't seem like we have a vote in this. It's rather you're telling us what you're doing. And my question 
is then, like, it's our objections really don't mean much here, potentially. Right? Because I, too, is by, unless I have access, it makes no sense for me to support or pay for that improvement of the street. There's a buffer between, right? So there, it doesn't affect my property in any way. And if I should have been one subdivided or whatever, then it makes sense to have access. I don't need access to that street. It doesn't affect my business to have access to that street. If I were to have access, then it, then there's some potential benefit, I guess. But that's a huge cost to incur to a business when there's absolutely no benefit. Whereas to the homeowners, there's clearly a benefit. There's hopefully a benefit to the property value. Um, that makes sense for them over time to have that street finished. Okay, so just going back to your initial statement, even though you don't actually vote on this, we are taking your comments very, very seriously. Mr. O'Kirk is writing down all the comments. We're going to sit down and discuss those. You do have a voice. I don't want you to leave here thinking that you, know, you just said something that we're ignoring. We're not ignoring it. This is a planning phase. Um, correct, Michael? This is a planning phase. We're going to take into consideration what everyone says and, and try to find you know, a balance of interest here for everybody. And to the point of understanding that there's so much rock in Eagle Cliffs, how far down do you actually need to go in order for, to put down pavement? I'm glad you're asking him that. That's a question I can answer. It's not far from pavement, but the, the, the big issue for sewer and water, those utilities are gravity. Because of gravity, they have to go down in depth. And the, the complexity in design, one of the complexities of design is, is to hit that balance try to elevate the road as much as we can to minimize the amount of cuts that are required for those utilities. But you're also going to consider what Mr. Cervelli said about tying into the court. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's why I, 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 I took Mr. Cervelli's card. Cervelli, please. Cervelli, sorry. I'm not Mr. Cervelli. <laughs> Cervelli. I, I apologize. <laughs> uh, the idea that certainly we could, if we could move these utilities instead of going down here and here, and we, we could connect all the utilities there, Oh, absolutely. So my understanding is historically there's been a lot of flooding on Bayview, right? Mm -hmm. uh, In the I backyards of Bayview Avenue. Is that correct? Yes. There's not been any flooding? Not for you. Yes, Bayview used to flood. Bayview and Hudson. Bayview and Hudson. There's a lot of substantial. I also know that there's a huge amount of flooding in the backyards, and it's been very problematic. And there's flooding on other blocks around there, which is all why we had to really pay attention to that in the meetings here. I believe they did some of that with your work, so Heidi. Okay, and then part of the investment is the appeasement. We're not there yet. <laughs> we do. Um, how to do with making sure, right, in terms of where the water was going, right? Yes. Yeah, so uh, part of the other, other the other development that that was recently in the Board of Planning Board, the attenuating the drainage was number one, number two, and number three uh, of concerns. That development was. We had approval for that development only. So it had nothing to do with surrounding areas? Uh, well, let me say this. It, it did, but I'm just saying that this proposal, what we're discussing tonight, is to deal with the entire world. <coughs> so, so, so I guess my, part of my point is to go back to your point is do you, does it make sense for the town to be contributing some fraction of this total um, because it was done backwards? Although not due to, to this administration, whether we inherited or not, it is still where we are. But does it make sense for the town to be contributing a certain portion to the total uh, assessment? That's a non engineering question. I'll refer to that. You can still add that to your list. Though. We'll also do that. Anybody else? Yes. Uh, you mentioned a moment ago in response to one of the residents that, they were, that you were not interested or there was no precedent for vacating the street. I'd like to know what the criteria are legally for town vacating the street because it certainly was brought up with regards to other streets and other instances 
and perhaps it might make sense in this case. I don't know if it does, but it certainly would have to be criteria that exist in the state law or in the borough code that say how a borough can vacate it and under what conditions. So I don't think any of us are experts on vacation of streets. What we'll do is we'll take down your question and get to an answer. Second, why are you going all the way through the Bayview on this? Currently, the street is a paper street. If you go on it, it's sort of dead ends. You can turn around fairly, and you come out back again into full play. So why are you bringing this all the way in and adding the expense of going through the Bayview to the street? It is solely the only reason we're going down that easement along Lottie from the 5th Street, the 6th Street, and then all the way down 6th Street is for the drainage and other utilities. The road construction is limited to this area here solely. And as discussed tonight, if we could somehow connect those utilities to Fort Lee at a shorter distance in cost, we will absolutely do so. I would strongly encourage you to consider that because what Ms. Skolnick said about the flooding did exist on Bayview. It exists at the bottom of Bayview as it gets closer to Hudson Terrace. Some of it was to be mediated by some of the mediation work that LG was putting on its property, but it's not clear whether that is all because there are underground streams there. And I would think there would be a problem if you added more water flow to Bayview than we have here. Yes, and that's why there has to be an extensive analysis of the existing facilities to see if they can accept this. If they cannot, perhaps some other alternate design would have to be employed, such as on-site storage. You may want to explore connecting with Fort Lee if they are offering that as an alternative to exploring an extensive study that little fell onto Bayview because if you tie into the Fort Lee sewers, you obviate the need for all the other studies and the problems that might be resident in going to Bayview. Oh, absolutely. As of tonight, that is our first choice and first decision. Thank you. The other thing is I want to correct some history. As someone who moved on to a street that was unpaved over 40 years ago, the cost of pavement, first of all, the street was unpaved as each of the houses were constructed, and that is the case in many of the streets in my part of town. As the streets got developed, the houses were put onto it, and when the houses were completed and people had moved in, the streets were paved, and the cost of that pavement and whatever else was done to the street was borne by the builders of the town, of the development, not the residents. So it is a very unique position that I guess we all find ourselves in when this kind of extensive cost is assessed to residents when it should have been borne by the builders. That may be the only thing we ever agree on. Thank you. I never heard the word curb cut until tonight. Curb cut simply means where the curb is not where you drive into. Yes. One, two, and three, that right now is just, that's why the road has gotten so torn to pieces. People cut through the back of Mona's and the Cumpf history before they cut through into the parking lot, which I don't think anyone, I don't think even you guys want that happening, right? Yeah. No, no, not at all. I mean, it never used to be such a pass-through, but is it in the plan to have that still open, or will there be a curb going from Fort Lee Fifth Street to the end of, do you understand what I'm asking? Only where there's existing access. This is the house across. Yeah, it looks like a house. Right. Sorry, go ahead. Only where there's existing access. That's where everything's open. There's no curb, so that's where I'm standing. Are you saying that there are already plans for existing access? If someone could drive a four-wheel drive vehicle 
over grass or yeah. something like that. That's not considered access. Access would be the existing addresses and mailboxes that and or pavement that that exists today. So I guess now to their point on the commercial side, is there a plan right now for there to be perfect? So I'm picturing a paved street, right? I'm driving north on 10th Street, the residential house on the right. On the left, currently, is it supposed to be solid curve all the way, or are yeah. there supposed to be curve cuts? At, at this time, at this yeah. time, and this is what you was discussed earlier, is that if anybody, for that matter, if any entity, whether it be commercial, residential, if they're going to propose new access on 5th Street, today or later, they would have to go to the planning board. And that person would have to go to the planning board and say, Okay, this is how I'm doing it. Here's my asphalt. Here's where it's going to connect with the road, whether it be today, uh, woods, stone, or in the future, asphalt with, with the curve and say, okay, this is where I'm going to connect with the curve and I'm going to put a drop curve here. So are we going to include the planning board into this? I think I know what he said. Yeah. 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 Presently, there's everything open. Yeah. It's all open because there's no there's street. street. But right. obviously, if it had been a developed street, they're all curb cut openings. I mean, I just built a new house. Was it 22 feet or whatever you're allowed to be open? So, since you are now going to be in this plan, <coughs> is it going to be as <coughs> a 22 foot opening or what is the opening? I'm sure it's not going to be. Yes, it'll be, it'll be limited to uh, it'll be limited to regulated opening. But will, be it be on, will it be on the west side of the street also? Where, will there be. Because I understand There's right now. I, I do exit from the commercial side. From the commercial onto the street. Because if street, that's the case, I want to go on record with my two neighbors that say we have no problem if they're footing this bill for 20% of it or anyone. We, we've we never said we need this beautiful road and we don't. We knew we where we bought. So I just want to make sure you know that. opening on the other side of the street. That, we have no problem with them having it, access it, to the street. If, it, if an access exists, yes. Okay, that's so that answers your question. Okay. But it has to be within regulation. Whatever the ordinance is set. <coughs> yeah, that's beyond. Right, head. exactly. But so I, we have engineers. But I, just have, I want to make sure that the res, three of the residents have no problem with giving them access if we're. Because if you don't charge them, then you're hitting seven houses with a million dollar bill. That's really not helping the residents, which it sounds like you guys are trying to do right now. So. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else in the public who wishes to be heard? Okay, can I have a motion to close? So so all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye. Can everyone just turn their microphones on? It's not picking up. Turn your microphones on. No. Uh, so can I have a motion? Mark, a motion Councilman to, uh, Park, just turn on your mic. Yeah, yeah, turn on. Okay. My, my microphone's on. Yep, you're good. I can hear you. Okay. Can I have a motion to adopt the <coughs> ordinance, the, an approved ordinance 18 01? So Second. Madam Costa, we have a vote. Sure. Council Persons E. Park? Yes. McMorrow? Yes. M. Park? Yes. Wu? Yes. It passes, Mayor, four votes. Okay. Thank you, so it passes. Um, let's do the three resolutions. Can someone get uh, Councilwoman O back out? Thank you. Let's do the, uh, the three resolutions. Um, 1874, 75, and 76, and then we'll go into closed session. Uh, so 1874, Madam Clerk, would you please uh, take care of that one? Author, 1874, authorizing increase to hourly rate and not to exceed amount for Borough Defense Attorney Lanza and Lanza, LLP, in Borough versus Boswell Engineering. I need a motion. So moved. Second. Council Persons E. Park? Yes. O? Yes. McMorrow? Yes. M. Park? Yes. Woo? Yes. 1875. Authorizing settlement and payment of attorney fees in Oprah litigation. I need a motion. Point of discussion, Mayor? Yes. Um, so. During the public session, uh, Ms. Geiger had mentioned that her attorney had sent um, our former attorney an email. Um, so I'd like to know what that was about. Um, 
Can you, do you have the email? I did, she I scrolled something from yesterday. I have not been able to catch up. Oh, we're, 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 we're dealing with the resolution that's on the agenda tonight. I understand that, but it may, it may relate to that. Well, I have a point of order, Mayor. Yeah. Councilwoman O has conflict on this matter in regards to Ms. Geiger. I brought this up before. I believe she's got several conflicts on several different litigations that are being handled for the record. I haven't been given an answer one way or another, and I'm just going to place it on the record again based on emails that were produced. Are, are you advocating for a certain position right now? Um, I don't think that's what I said, Mayor. I heard that she said there was an email from the attorney to Anne-Marie, and I'd like to know what that was. Well, Anne-Marie doesn't have it right now. Okay, then I'd like if you want, we can table this, or we can vote on it. No. We, we can vote on it. I'm placing on the record that I believe Councilwoman O has a conflict with certain matters. I was at the last meeting, and this is a big deal. When you said that everybody should be We can't do this. We, we follow. So this is an issue for people. No, no. Well, I don't understand why you're yelling out of the audience. We don't do it this way. You had your opportunity. This well, is the council. This is a new issue. It, but it's not, it's not public done. portion, ma'am. I can't do this. I can't let no, you just no, yell no. out. I'm trying to be respectful, and I know you don't feel that way, but please, we can't just yell out. We're going to note the fact that there's an email from Mr. Lohr, who's also the fire department attorney, who represents Ms. Geiger, who, who <laughs> sent an email that no one has up here except yes. Gloria, perhaps, and Ms. Geiger. I, I do not have I'm, I'm here to conduct business, not... The borough attorney has it. We, no one has it. We, 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 right, let me just finish this also. We cannot, we cannot accept things from someone else's client, all right? You have a, we don't want it. We don't want it. We want to deal with your lawyer, okay? Can I ask a question to uh, the board attorney? May I get a uh, copy of the email forwarded to me tomorrow? Uh, I don't know yet. I'll make that decision. However, I am requesting that the uh, resolution be tabled at this time. Thank you. I and, um, the we're in the middle of the I would also like to ask uh, the borough attorney what my conflict would be. I mean, I, I don't understand what the council president uh, stated before. Okay, so let's deal with the issue of the uh, settlement that we have negotiated with the attorney. He's raising new issues. Let, let's. We have a motion and we have a second. We had a point of order. We had another point of order. We've addressed them. And we're in the middle of voting. You could vote yes, no, abstain, or, or recuse. So, okay? are you going against the borough attorney's recommendation to table this? She asked for a motion. You can we're withdraw not, the motion to accept. I can't withdraw anything. I'm only the mayor. Okay, so who made, who made the motion to accept? What? No. There's a motion, there a motion pending. There was no motion. You, you, Except point of order. you can make a motion to table. Okay. You can I do that. Okay, let me guide you through this. This is what you do, okay? Now, if you get a second, somebody could second this. Is there a second? There, there's no second. Hold on. There's no point of order. We're in the middle of a vote. Ellen speaking on the phone. Hello? I'm sorry. I thought I just heard Anne Marie going to table this. Anne Marie cannot table She could recommend. I made a motion, Ellen. A council person has to move. Gloria O made a motion. I, and I need a second. Uh, so I second. Of course, okay. But I had a point of order before the second. Okay, so what's your point of order? What's your order? What is your point of order? I just wanted to ask. All right, you're, you're speaking out of line. You're not recognized. What, what's your I, I question? Wanted ask, oh, I recognize it. I wanted to ask what the borough attorney meant when she asked for it to be taken. She has no basis for asking. No, I, I don't ask for it to be <laughs> tabled. You guys have to vote to table it. Okay, so just discussion for a moment because I'm, I'm just. All right, right now we, we have a motion to table and we have a second. Let's have a vote on table. Gloria made a motion to table. 1874. Why do we want to table? I'm not discussing right now. Okay. Why don't we want okay. to table? She hasn't given a reason. No, the, the borough attorney had recommended that there was some sort of new, I don't know. What, what did I you don't say, know. <laughs> of course you don't know. I'm asking, I'm okay. addressing my question to the board. I was in meetings all day until 5.30. I did not see this email. I saw the email last night thanking me for giving them a uh, copy of the required document and for uh, 
giving them a draft of the resolution. I didn't see today's email until just now. They're okay. raising new issues. So let's have okay. a vote I on the table. I don't know whether they're cut. Okay. okay. I want to get to I'd like to. I'd you like don't to have the floor right now. We, we're in the middle of a vote, okay? So you spoke. You have a second. Let's have a vote on the table. Okay. Councilpersons E. Park? Yeah. Oops, sorry. No. O? Um, I'm voting yes because uh, you the don't have to borough attorney mentioned that there are new allegations. Okay. Yeah, no, no. No, McMorrow? That's, that's not what the borough attorney said. McMorrow? Point of order. This is, all, she's voting on something she might have a conflict with. That's, mm -hmm. that's her problem. That's okay. That's, that's her problem. But if we owe money, I'd like to vote and pay this. Mm -hmm. So we're, I, want, I, would, I would like to pay the bill to this attorney. I'm not understanding the reason for tabling this. So the vote is to table the payment of the bill? I'm voting no, because I would like to pay the bill. No, the, the vote is to table the resolution. Right, right. which means then that Right, the so if, here's the way it works. I'm if, voting if, no. On if it fails to get tabled, then we will vote on 1874 as it's written. Okay? But we have to get well, to... 1875. 1875, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you voted no? Okay. I, I, I yeah. Voted no okay. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Park? No. Wu? No. Okay, so the tabling fails. We had a motion and a second on the actual approval of 1875. Actually, no, we didn't have a motion yet. So motion. I, we, we did, actually. No. We did. Okay. Point of, point of but order. we could do it again. Yes, please. Point we have a order. motion for 1875. There's point, point of order. order. Mayor. Mayor. Second. Mayor. Yes. Yes, Alan, what is your point of order? My point of order is... If we have to come back and now amend the resolution when borough attorneys on the record saying that we may have to table this because she hadn't read her email from this today, then I just want to put it on the record. That's fine. Okay, let's have a vote. Okay. Wait, point of order, Mayor? Yes. I'd Mr. like to also ask the borough attorney to give her opinion about whether I have a conflict on this matter or not in writing because I don't know what the uh, president Council President uh, McMurray is yes. stating about me having conflict on well, this issue. Well, I guess the question really is, Councilwoman McMurray, why do you believe Councilwoman O has a conflict? Well, I, I, I can't give a legal opinion whether she has one or not. I can raise the issue of whether I, uh, that I believe she may have one because she has recused on certain items having to do with Ms. Geiger. Then she's voted on certain items having to do with Ms. Geiger. Then, uh, as I stated at the last council meeting, there were documents that were not marked oh. confidential that came up in the Chaffee versus uh, Borough Angle oh. Trust litigation that had Ms. Steiger, oh. Ms. Simon, Ms. Gabari, uh, Gloria O, okay. Joe Gabaro, no. everybody no. communicating. No. Yeah. 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 Please, yeah. Order, yeah. order. order. Okay. order. Okay. Okay. Right. Here, here's the way this breaks down. I have the floor, folks. Okay. You don't get to do that either. Please, no. please you get to leave now. You get to leave now, okay? Um, you're out of order. You're out of order. This is your first one. You got to respond. All right, here, here's the third. If you have a conflict, you proceed at your own peril. We're not here to evaluate your conflict. No, excuse me, Mayor. So we're voting. Excuse me. Excuse me. The borough attorney, borough attorney represents every single one of us up here. I'm asking her for her legal opinion, not from the council president, McMorrow. She's not an attorney. She doesn't represent me. The borough attorney does. So, Emory, do I have a conflict or not? Well, it's, it's hard for me to assess. You have recused under the Favaro versus Bernal matter, which also involved Ms. Geiger as a plaintiff, the first case. We now have another case, Favaro versus Borough, I like to call it number two, and Ms. Geiger is not in that case, but Melanie Simon is. What, excuse me. So the basis of that recusal, and Ed Versa also uh, took that recusal, may still exist. I don't know, I haven't consulted with you recently. In addition, what the council president raised at the last meeting and is again raising is apparently emails in discovery in a litigation. This, this discovery was produced by Chief Chiaki 
and the, it, it consists of approximately 2,000 pages besides the 120 tape recordings he took of people. He also gave 2,000 pages of discovery. And, and Councilman McMorrow is a named defendant. She received the discovery appropriately through her defense attorney in that case. Apparently, in that discovery are emails. I'm sure she's not misrepresenting. There are emails amongst many people, yourself, Councilwoman Park, who wasn't a councilwoman at the time or was running to be elected, and Councilman Aversa are on those emails, and they are being circulated among, among and so many Simon people. And Savari, Ms. Simon, Joe Favaro, Joe you Favaro. don't have the floor. Okay. And why doesn't she get all now when she doesn't have the floor? You, you don't get to do that either. Okay. You, you guys have your last warning. You're going to have to leave in a minute, okay? Look, if you have a conflict... I don't know if I have a well, conflict. Then, okay. then you know what? So here, here is the position as I understand it. The position, I, is, uh, as I understand it, and having not seen these emails, okay, the position, as I understand it, is that there is discussion in these emails about these lawsuits have, that have been brought or were to be brought against the borough, yeah, and I'm also, not, I'm not excuse comment, me. I'm not commenting on that. No, I'm not going to comment. Uh, Okay, see, here's the thing. It's I haven't seen these emails. Yeah, exactly. Here's the thing. So if how you, do you expect me to myself? If you, if you feel, myself, if you if feel you that you're in emails, if, you're, okay. if you feel that you're in I, emails I, where you coordinated litigation against the borough by people sitting there, then you should recuse yourself. Yes, that's what you should do. If you're confident that you have no conflict, then you could do whatever you want. Okay? Yeah, but we I, need a vote. I, I'm consulting my we attorney. Have, we have business. Ms. O'Shea was a witness when Ms. Simon ran to uh, Councilman Al at the February meeting and uh, said, made a statement to Councilman Al about me about one of the litigations. And Ms. O'Shea was a witness to that as well, on top of everything. <laughs> oh, my God. This is so ridiculous. Oh All right. We're in the middle of the vote. You know, you know what? Take these votes. Council. Council persons. Uh, e Park Resolution 1875, authorizing settlement and payment of attorney fees in OPA litigation. Yes. Yeah. O. Epstein. McMorrow. Yes. M Park. Yes. Wu. Yes. What's wrong? What's wrong? Yes, sir. 1876, approved uh, contract for emergency notification provider. Ms. Final, did you review that contract? The contract appears to provide not only the services that you currently have, but the services for which you were seeking where you can fall into the system as you were asking us to do. Okay. Is it acceptable to you? Okay. Do you have a vote? It's acceptable to me. Need a motion? So moved. Council persons E Park? Yes. O? Yes. McMorrow? Yes. M Park? Yes. Woo? Yes. Okay, can I have a um, motion to go to closed session? Uh, one second, I need to amend that. I am removing the borrow and signing versus the borrow docket number DERL 700317 from the closed session. Can I ask you why? Because I need to assess it further. Okay, thank you. Can I have a motion to go into closed session for everything except the deleted for borrow versus Simon and Simon versus borrow? Second. All in favor? Uh, okay. uh, Madam Clerk, could you please read the requisite language for closed session, please? Whereas the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Englewood Cliffs has deemed it necessary to go into closed session to discuss certain confidential matters. Whereas the minutes of the closed session will remain confidential as permitted under the Open Public Meetings Act. Or shall be released when there is no further need for confidentiality as required by the Borough Attorney. 
Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Englewood Cliffs will go into closed session for the following matters as permitted under the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 colon 4 dash 12. Resolution 1877 to go into closed session discussion of the following matters. Borough of Englewood Cliffs, docket I'm number. Sorry, can you guys just stop talking while the other person is speaking? We're listening. We're listening. No, you're speaking and listening. Okay. Listening. It's very We're rude. Fine. Okay, it's inconsiderate. We'll be quiet. Just Thank you. You may continue. For Alvin Google Cliffs, docket number BRL 6119-15. Affordable housing, 800 Sylvan Avenue, LLC versus Borough of Englewood Cliffs, Mayor and Council and Planning Board, docket number BERL 6918. Builders Remedy Lawsuit, 800 Sylvan Avenue, LLC versus Planning Board, docket number BERL 908817. Builders suit to challenge Planning Board denial, including resident Karen Geiger's motion to intervene in support of 800 Sylvan Avenue, LLC against the Borough of Inglewood Cliffs Planning Board. And Michael Chaffee versus Borough and Council Members, docket number BERL 6619-17. Prerogative writ action challenging the PSD ordinance. And for the record, uh, the last item for Ireland Simon was removed and will not be spoken about during closed session. Right. Okay, I, I put closed session at the end. Uh, we're going to be a while, so I just want to tell the public that you don't have to um, feel like there's going to be anything after this. It's just going to be an adjournment of the meeting. You're welcome to stay, though, if you wish. I want to thank our professionals, our line council, and our engineer for coming tonight. Uh, so if I don't see you all after a closed session, have a good night. All right, so Mayor, just let me state for the record, to be clear, members of the public and Mayor and Council, the only further public action that will occur is to come out of closed and adjourn this meeting. No further public action will be taken after our closed session. It is going to be a lengthy one. Um, I'm also disconnecting Councilwoman Park from the call. She will not be participating while we are enclosed. Thank you, Councilwoman Park. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Oh, thank you. A motion to come out of close. So, second. All in favor? Aye. Oh, and McMorrow. Should I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So, second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, it's 940. Great. Thank you. Right. Good morning. 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 Good